This is a very interesting unboxing today. I have a kit from Adaptech. This is their Max IQ kit. So what this does is it actually takes one of their raid cards. So here I have an Adaptech raid card. This is a, I don't even know if the part number is on there. Oh yeah, there's the part number. Okay, so it's a retail one. It is actually a 5445, if I recall correctly. Oh yeah, there it is. It's a 5445. And then you use an SSD. In this case, it's an Adaptech rebadged. Um, my SSD rocks. It's a rebadged with Adaptech branding Intel X25E32 gig. So what this is for, and it's preloaded with all of the software on the SSD, so it's pretty much ready to go. All you have to do is plug in the necessary drives to your RAID controller. So here, actually, inside here, we might as well do a quick unboxing since we're doing an unboxing. So we've got their storage manager CD. You should probably download the latest off the Adaptech website, as well as drivers and documentation, which you can view the documentation here because it's here, or you can download the latest off the Adaptech website. Uh, here, this is the part name. These are the toxic or hazardous substance and elements that I'm guessing it does not contain. Uh, is below the limit requirement. Okay, zero. Excellent, good. Um, okay, then we have a quick start guide for the SAS RAID controller. All right. Then here we have a California proposition, isn't it? Ooh, known to cause birth defects. Okay, so don't eat this RAID card, please. Do not eat it. Okay, here we have... Well, this is useful. Okay, so this is a little guide on SAS connections. SAS and SATA connections. So they're showing you all of the different ways that you can connect a card to uh, drives. So you can use one of these with a backplane, you can use one of these to an external box, you can use a splitter with a backplane. Okay, okay, so this backplane actually does the splitting within the backplane. This one actually takes the, what is this thing called? SFF8088 or 8087, I can't remember. So that's the internal one. It takes one of those and it turns it into four SATA connectors, which SATA connectors are identical to SAS connectors physically. So you can actually take one of these and plug it into either a SATA drive or a SAS drive, or you can plug directly into the backs of the drives. Depends how you want to roll. Okay, maximize storage with SAS. What do we got here? Oh, here's a little guide to all of the Adaptech connectors that you could potentially need. So here's where I'll probably figure out um, which one it is. Yeah, sorry, it's an SFF8087. And so you need one of these breakout cables to use four drives on this controller. That's pretty straightforward. All right, cool. Very nice. Let's get onto the card itself. So the card comes with either a full-sized PCI bracket or a half-height PCI bracket. The half-height one is here, right there. Okay. So if you have like a 1U chassis or something like that, then that would be useful. So it's a 54 for, uh, it's a 5445. So what that means is it's their 5000 series card. So that means it uses a, a premium Intel um, radon chip controller. So that means that all of the processing is done here. So that's the 5000 series. And then the next four means that it has, okay, the two fours basically mean that you can either hook up four drives internally or four drives externally. So this is an 8088 and this is an 8087 connector. You can't actually use both at the same time because the way the routing works internally on the card, there are actually only four data channels that are available. This is a PCI Express 8X card and then it has, like I said, it has a, a processor here, so there's a heatsink. These things get incredibly hot. So if you are planning to run a RAID controller in your system, whether it's a server or a, like a backup solution or a desktop, you do want to make sure you have decent ventilation for the card. They actually smell like they're burning when they're operating normally. So that begs the question, why on earth would you want one of these, whether it's for a server or whether it's for desktop use? The reason is that like anything dedicated versus an onboard version, they're just plain better than onboard controllers. It uses, like I said, a PCIe 8X interface. That means it has a ton of bandwidth available to it compared to a typical Southbridge based um, RAID or SATA controller. You can also use SAS drives if you really felt like it, but where they really shine is with SSDs. So couple different ways you could use this. You could either grab a Max IQ kit, which is quite expensive, I have to say, and then you can use that as a cache. 
So this is an SSD cache and it behaves kind of like the Seagate Momentus XT. So that's that new drive from Seagate that has a small, and in that case it's a four gig SSD built in to up to a 500 gig hard drive. Well, in this case, you are using that SSD cache, which is much larger. This is a 32 gig cache. It's also one of the fastest SSDs around, the X25, X25e. And you're using a 32 gig cache for an entire storage array. So that means that it's gonna take all of your frequently accessed data, store it on the SSD so you get lightning fast random reads and writes for those little bits of data. And then you've also, you're also backed up by a bigger storage array, which can be running RAID 0, RAID 1, RAID 5. And then you can access all of your bulk data that way. So you kind of get the best of both worlds. There's a few solutions out there like this now, but this one is aimed more at a server enterprise uh, workstation level. And the others like the uh, Silverstone HDD Boost or the Momentus XT are aimed at desktop users or laptop users respectively. The other reason to put a high-end RAID controller in your system is if you're, oh yeah, I kind of already mentioned this, if you're running a bunch of SSDs, you can get huge, huge reads and writes out of a dedicated RAID controller running like three or four SSDs versus if you're running them on your onboard RAID. So thank you for checking out my unboxing of the 